very much for your company. I hope you've managed to find a winner or two and you've had a profitable night. And we look forward to having your company again tomorrow or someday very soon. Good night. Guess who's here? Who's here? Sammy Nadai. Sammy, Sammy Nadai. Sammy Nadai. Nadai. Now, I am in elite company here. How you doing, mate? <laughs> you boys, you boys were, were the best of his friends, and uh, I think we've all got memories regardless, though, don't well, we? Well, you've got memories, too. Um, oh, what do you use to call him? Yeah. I used to call him Brannock because of a, a pacer what? by the name of Nicholas Brannock, a, a horse that was very... You know, oh, very he, was good, he was a good horse. Nicholas he Brannock, yeah. yeah. Horse. yeah. So he was Brannock. Um, and he used to call Sammy. Yeah. The ponytail kid. When I had uh, a little bit longer hair, but my, yeah. my favourite story of, of Nick, and, and after working with him for ten years, I've got lots. <laughs> but my favourite one's the first one. I've strolled into Sky Channel for the very first time. Stephen Fletcher in tow, and Stephen says to Nick, he says, uh, you "Should play Sam in tennis. He's pretty good." Well, <laughs> <laughs> you reckon that got his attention? <laughs> Red ragged ball. Yeah. Now, apparently, at this stage, yeah. Nick was virtually unbeaten on the Sky Tour. Channel. Let's Everything's talk. a talk. Yeah. Yeah. And it was ironic because there would have only been ever one sport I could beat Nick at, and that happened to be tennis. I played it as a kid, so it was the one game I was ever going to be able to give him a challenge in. So we get up there on the court, and he didn't go down without a fight, but I did manage to beat him. Well, I hadn't even started at Sky Channel yet, and we were having the rematch. <laughs> and it, it was 38 degrees in the shade. We went to five sets. And I thought, I could give up now and be happy, but I can't. He, he almost instilled in me his sense to win, his will to win, his, his great competitiveness. And he beat me. And he never asked me for another game. <laughs> <laughs> no one. You were too close. <laughs> I, I played a lot of doubles games yeah. with him, but I was always on his side. Do you remember the first time you met him? Yeah, that was, the, that was pretty much with Steve Fletcher, and uh, he was uh, marching on through the building as, he, he? as he often did. The two Twirling. Things, yeah. Twirling. Yeah. No, Twirling. Well, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Steve Fletcher is here. <laughs> Steve Fletcher. Oh, the long and the short of it all. Didn't he? Oh, he loved you. Oh, he did. He <laughs> loved, you, know why, you know why he loved Fletch? Because he's a punter. He's a mad punter. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a punter, really, though, was he? No, he was a guest. He was a guest. He was a guest. Oh, yes, so we're all, we're not. Sam and I used to laugh at his bets. He used to, uh, <laughs> remember, we, remember he used to say, he used to, and I used to say, you've got to, we call it pyramid punting. His bets would have been... Yeah, one and two to win, yeah. three and four for second. <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. Raise five, uh, one and six to win for second, three, four, seven. For third, two and nine for a dollar fifty. Flexi. But one thing... <laughs> this was a, one thing, uh, and the reason that Steve and Nick got on very well, uh, Steve's very intelligent and, and, and sharp weird, and, and something that people probably don't realise a lot about Nick, they would have seen just a very pleasant person. He had the most wicked sense of humour. Oh. And, and often on air, he would say things, I'd be in a tab somewhere and I'd just be on the ground laughing yeah. around everyone else is filling out tickets. Yeah. But I knew how funny yeah. it was. What about the what about the tribute piece you showed where there was the um the harness oh, yeah. race? The harness oh, race. Oh, oh yeah. Leaders away impression has trailed up in turn by Defoe. Then Christopher Vancey's fourth last early. Hi. Gee, it was a great run, wasn't it, Westburn Grant? Uh, we can't show you the remainder of the race because it was just too emotional. There he goes. He can't show you anymore. Oh. It was just way too emotional. <laughs> you just look at me and you go... Where's my ground? Where's my ground? Way too emotional. It was just outstanding when you had, had people in front of him, whether he was out at a racetrack with uh, looking into the camera and the crowd around him, or whether it was at a trivia night that we used to put on it. Uh, he used to host at pubs and clubs for us or a corporate function. Nick with his, his quick wit, his repartee, his, uh, that infectious quality that came people. People immediately related to Nick. 
and he was just he was just such a, a wonderful wonderful ambassador to the to the company Nick Robin I still hoped he had plenty of games of golf left in him I remember when I met him at Sky Channel I was a young fella he was just a little bit older than me he used to cart me up to Chatswood Golf Club and teach me to play golf he was off scratch he all he wanted to be was a pro golfer but he also had this wonderful career in the media his face lit up the room his eyes lit up the room he was a consummate professional a consummate bloke and God will miss him see you Nick my endearing memory of him is being in a broadcast box at Aussie Stadium calling football over the years and uh, a knock on the door. A funny thing for, for, to happen at the football, a knock on the door and you'd open the door and there'd be Nick Raven. Never one to come in uninvited but always knocking on the door to say good day, uh, to ask how his beloved Rabbitohs would go that particular day. More recently, unfortunately, they were always beaten but that didn't diminish Nick's support for the club and for the green and gold, uh, for the uh, red and green colours of the Rabbitohs. So, uh, some wonderful memories of a really, really decent man. Can you remember when you first met him or the, where you first heard him? Uh, it was in, I was living in Newcastle and he yeah. became the love god of 2HD oh. Newcastle. I now. Can't re now, I can't remember what was his first uh, role on 2HD. But why did he took him up there? He did drive. Yeah. Initially he did drive. He did yeah, drive. In 1984 when he first went up there, I'm told. And he did Saturday afternoon. Yeah. And on 2HD, he eventually did this uh, amazing show called Matchmakers. And here was Nick on there, you know, with that beautiful velvet oh, voice, yeah, and yeah. he was the love god, <laughs> bringing people together. Yeah. You wanted to sound like him. If yeah. you could sound oh, half as good as him, if you could yeah. sound half as yeah. good as him, you were going all right. Yeah. It was just this amazing, beautiful radio voice. Yeah. And then, as you said, when you first met him, yeah. that you noticed straight away he was a natural for television. Well, yeah. That's obvious. Yeah. It was, uh, I can recall it so well. I, the, the occasion was, um, I know it was at the Rural Leagues Club, so it must have been something to do with Kemmel LaGrange. Um, and he'd been on, he'd, this was 1980, uh, 1988, and he'd come down to 2KY. And he'd been at 2KY, I think, around about seven months, eight months mm -hmm. or so, after being on 2HD. And we're at the function, and um, a young fellow stepped up from the table, and uh, he introduced himself. And I'd heard Nick Robin's voice on air obviously on KY and he said oh Graham he said uh, I, I didn't introduce myself I'm Nick Raven I said you're Nick Raven I said well I've heard all about you but you only took one, one look at him and I said well you're a television natural mm. all right welcome back on Sky's National Greyhounds and you're with Nick Raven tonight filling in for the boss he'll be back with us sometime next week as we take a he look. was totally consumed by sport wasn't he he'd like you could ask, he'd ring up and he'd say, mate, are you watching? And I'd go, watching what? He said, the gridiron. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. I live with him. No. I live with him and I couldn't, we never watched a movie. <laughs> we never watched anything never that watched didn't have, we didn't watch anything that didn't have sport in it. Yeah. <laughs> he'd come home and he'd say, have you seen this boxing match between uh, Arturo Gatti and, uh, hmm. Mel, what was that? Mickey Ward. Mickey Ward. Oh, yeah. He said, wait till you see this. So he's put it in, we've watched it, and he wouldn't tell me the result, but it went right down to the wire. Yeah. Did he try to bet with you? No, no, he, he knew I wasn't, that, I wasn't that stupid. And then after that finishes, I think the baseball's starting now. We'd sit there and just watch sport, and I'd say, I'm going to bed. I said, I can't, I can't cop any more sport. He could watch sport from the time he got home to the time he went to bed, and then hopefully some other game, like an NFL game, was starting yeah. Monday morning. Yeah. But how fit was, was he? Like, honestly, we haven't really touched oh. on how fit he was. He... He'd play 11 sets of tennis with three different people mm. and then see themselves, right, who's yeah. next? Who's yeah, going? and then he'd come home and he'd go to the gym or he'd go now, home. Now, didn't he try to get you fit or something? Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> but what happened? Hundreds of times. <laughs> he'd come home and I'd be sitting on the lounge and having a beer and he'd say, yeah. after you've finished that, we're going to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> I said, this is, this is number eight. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> so if you have me all day, come on, we just go. How about we just go for a run on the beach? We'll yeah. just go up and back. Yeah, it's crazy. So, oh, and he, you know, you'd be jogging along in this soft sand, and <laughs> he'd be powering along saying, You're doing well, you're doing well. <laughs> and he'd say, Come on, we'll sprint the last little bit. <laughs> oh, come on. I've been doing that for the last 800. And then, you know, then he'd come home and he'd go down, the, uh, go down the gym and he'd box for half an hour. Yeah. Well, that's something we shouldn't forget about boxing. Now, you've he just loved raised, boxing. He loved boxing. Oh. He was very much our Lord of the Ring too, wasn't he? Because, I mean, he, he really excelled. And that's a, that's, a, that's a tough call when you get in that, uh, that cauldron. You know, when you've got thousands of people out there. And, he, you know, he, he was the MC at uh, some of the great world championships, as we know. And one of the young producers at, uh, at work, uh, Matty Brooks, just reminded me how many times that Nick held that show together. Would you please welcome, uh, making his way to the ring, to defend his championship belt, 
the one and only Costa He was living his dream. Yeah. Like this is a world title fight. And Nicky's the host. Mm. Nicky's the ring announcer. Yeah. Richard, uh, Richard. Richard. Hey, Richard. Oh, uh, come here. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hold on. Hold on. There are rules. Oh, hang on. There are rules. Yeah. 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 Q. Told. All right. You've been told about the rules, haven't you? There are rules. There are rules. <laughs> hey, Richard. <laughs> we were talking earlier on about his involvement with um, trivia nights, uh, hostings, and now you've been involved, very much involved with him here. Charity nights in particular. Um, whenever there was some, particularly with a charity uh, occasion, uh, someone asked him to come along. Uh, Jimmy Cassidy is, is a classic example. To go and raise money. I remember there was one incident um, years ago where um, they needed money to help uh, save the Tumbarumba Race Club. Off he went with uh, Jimmy, and I think they raised about fifteen or eighteen thousand dollars. That's the sort of bloke he was, though, too, wasn't he? I, it, I'd say over the years, he he would have done hundreds. Yeah. He done he, he come and did a lot for us and uh, different charities, and it wasn't long ago. And I think Greg had done it the year before. Went up to the Blue Mountains to uh, the Blackheath mm. for a leukemia foundation, mm. and uh, it's not the easiest drive to Blackheath from uh, DY. It takes you a long while. Uh, Nick did have a blow up because they played golf first and uh, it was a very slow day charity days and that was what used to blow him up. Slow golf days on charity never days. never liked the Ambrose, oh. did he? No. no. But, <laughs> got to wait for the others to walk up. Yeah. We didn't leave there till one o'clock in the morning and like to DY and of course the next day he had to do a national program. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> but he never winched, he did them all, but oh, I can honestly say that a lot of charities now be the worst for Nick's passing. Mm. I can honestly say that. But the, I think one of the, the true things, and I could never say it while, while, while Nick was alive, Nick being a, a total and absolute maniac South Sydney supporter, I used to be the grand announcer at Coggo for the Mighty Dragons, <laughs> the number one side. Anyway, I couldn't do it for a few weeks. Nick did three games at Cogger Oval, but the only proviso was that no one ever knew. Mm, and yeah. Nick used to do it. Yeah. And Brian Johnson rang me after the first time and he said, who is this bloke? He said, you can't keep giving blokes raps. He said, back three generations. It used because their heritage traces back to the bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> and that was for the opposition. <laughs> so I had to have a chat with Nicky yeah, before yeah, game yeah. two. Yeah. But it was 500 cash, so Nicky was yeah. certainly going to be there. <laughs> Years ago, where we used to go training in a boxing gym at the back of DY, and uh, we called ourselves Team Cyborg, half human, half machine. He was uh, a super fit guy, a super nice guy, and I'll miss him a lot. He loved his life. He was very, very happy with it. He said he had the greatest job in the world. He'd wake up, he'd go for a run, mate, he'd go for a surf, come up here, play tennis, start work at 4 o'clock, read some tote updates, have a punt. He couldn't have wished for any more. So uh, he is going to be sorely missed because it's almost like we're now missing a pretty serious part of the furniture. But uh, love him very much. Nick, we're going to miss you dearly, mate. Um, I was privileged to be one of your great mates, the time that you spent with me and Vic and my girl, Sasha and Nicole, um, wonderful man, uh, the things you've done with me for charities, uh, they were all so special, um, you opened your heart to so many people, just being with you Nick was, was, was enormous, um, your warmth, your caring for, for everybody was, was quite incredible. Um, Mate, we've put you to rest, but we'll never forget about you. Gonna miss you dearly, mate. See you, buddy. His friendship with Pumper alone, um, and we're so fortunate to um, have enjoyed his close uh, friendship for all those years, but that is very demonstrative of just how loyal a man he was. You know, stuck, solid, it's, you know, in our, in our business, you know, he's, he's solid. You and he used to say to him occasionally, Pumper rode that poorly. Horse is no good. <laughs> is horse no good. <laughs> I'd say, Nick, he drew barrier three, he was 4D. <laughs> horse no good. He said, what do you want him to do? The thing that got me about Nicky was that he was so fit. And the thing that I can't understand is just how quick it all happened, Graham. I mean, it was like, it was yesterday he was right, mate. Golf, tomorrow. Well, we all thought Nick, and I think Nick thought he was invincible. I thought he was invincible. I mean, we all, because he was Honestly. so fit. Yeah. You know, as we've all discussed before, the other thing we should also mention, he was always so immaculately dressed. Hmm?